Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 14th of December 2020 and the time has just gone 12.08 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Um, the main kind of news has been, um, surprise, surprise, the UK and the European Union didn't reach an agreement over the weekend. The Sunday deadline was passed, quel surprise, uh, but both sides said you know they're going to go the extra mile uh, to try and um, to work out an agreement. Michel Barnier, uh, the the EU's chief negotiator, this morning, said that he, he, you know he, see, he sees a way in which a deal can be achieved. But we've been hearing this sort of rhetoric, rhetoric for a while. Um, ultimately, traders have taken that as a sign. Of tra traders have taken the have, have, have uh, reacted to the news by thinking, well, talks are still going ongoing. Therefore, there's, there's still a possibility of a deal being achieved. Uh, so European equity markets are, are higher across the board. Uh, the, the pound starting is is is, um, is outperforming on top of that. Um, but we also have uh, kind of chatter and speculation uh, about a stimulus package from the US. Um, there's a $908 billion that's a bipartisan uh, package that's going to be introduced today. There isn't a huge amount of optimism that it's going to get, ach get achieved, uh, going to get some support, um, but there is a bit of bipartisan support, cross party support. Um, so, that, so that bodes well. Uh, also, Steve Mnuchin, uh, the US uh, Treasury Secretary, uh, has also proposed, well, a few days ago, proposed a, a, a different uh, stimulus package. Uh, so with, with, with that kind of in the talk, in, uh, in the in circulation, that's kind of lifted sentiment over uh, on, the, on the US. Uh, as always, what I'll do is I'll run through um, the week ahead article. Uh, and then talk about the major markets, uh, and then look look at the major markets of the week. Uh, because this week uh, I, I I'm I am working a shorter week this week. Um, I will do I will mention a couple of other additional markets which I ordinarily wouldn't really cover in this um, in this update, kind of in lieu of my separate chart of the week video. Um, so I'll go to the, the week of, the week ahead article now, and then go through the major indices, uh, currencies, and commodities. Uh, so the week, ahead, had our, had our, uh, the week Ahead article can be found on our website, uh, cmcmarkets.com, under insights, and then news and analysis. So tomorrow, well, overnight, we're going to hear uh, the Chinese retail sales. That's going to give us a good indication of domestic demand in China. Uh, China's been bouncing back nicely uh, as, as in the wake of the COVID-19 crisis. And these, these, this report will give us an indication of how well the economy is recovering. Uh, perfect, perfect bricks. Um, the the property crowd, the um, the, the estate agent, uh, they're going to be um, they're going to be in focus uh, tomorrow because they get half your numbers out. We have seen um, a fair bit of activity in the uh, in the housing market in the last few weeks and months. Um, so th their their update is going to be fairly interesting. Uh, Tuesday tomorrow we also have UK unemployment numbers. Uh, Wednesday, we have first half number, numbers from Dixon's Carphone. Um, electronic items and kind of anything that can be used for a home office has been in high demand in, in 2020. So that's likely to be reflected in their update. Uh, the Federal Reserve meeting is on, on is on Wednesday. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're likely to hear the usual commentary about how they're committed to keeping interest rates very low. We'll also probably hear um, calls from the policy from central bankers to say, you know, to politicians, you know, we can't do this alone, guys. Can we have, um, is there any possibility of a fiscal response? Uh, we have the flash uh, manufacturer, you know, the flash PMI reports um, from, uh, from Germany and France on Wednesday. We have the Bank of England interest rate decision um, on Thursday. Given that um, the Bank of England, given that the UK and political, you know, the, the, the turmoil uh, of the, the COVID-19 crisis, the uncertainty in relation to the future relationship between the UK and the EU, it's highly unlikely, you know, you know all we're, we're, it's likely we're going to hear from the Bank of England, you know, pledges to keep, pledges to keep um, monetary policy um, accommodative to the state of the UK economy. Um, FedEx, the, tr the, um, the, the delivery company, they have numbers coming out, second quarter numbers coming out on Thursday. They're going to be of interest because Given these, there's been a huge surge in online shopping, um, they'll be kind of a good barometer for demand, particularly on the run up to Christmas. Um, we also have Nike um, 
the second quarter numbers coming out on, on Friday. They're 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 uh, norm, they, they've been a you know, very popular sports brand. Similar scenario ties in with the whole Christmas retail sales scenario, which brings me on nicely to UK retail sales. The report for November will be post, posted on Friday morning. So, what I run to through now is the major indices. Um, starting off at the uh, with the FTSE 100, I'll go through the big indices, go through the big uh, currency pairs, a couple of commodities, and then a few other uh, markets I find interesting. So the FTSE 100, um, not too long ago, um, was was up at a nine-month high. We retreated ever so slightly, but the broader uptrend, particularly over the last few months, well, basically since late October onwards, is still very much intact. So if we do press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in a 6,891. Uh, if we do have a pullback below the kind of 6,500 area, it could potentially uh, take us back down toward the kind of 6,000 forward zone. We saw a bit of consolidation around there. And if you go below that, excuse me, please keep an eye out for this area here in a 6,258. Excuse me. Um, I'll take a look now at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. Um, in relation to the DAX, we can see here that it's had a, like the FTSE, it's had a great run between late October and into November and December. It's been range bound uh, the last few weeks, but we're still very much in that upward trend. If we press on higher from here, we could look at the, to retest kind of the recent, um, we'll get to the top end of the range in around 13,462. If we go beyond that, we could then be looking at retesting with basically the all time high which was achieved um, in, in February, just before the COVID-19 crisis kicked off. Moves to the downside, could find some support from this area here in around, well, just north of 13,000, kind of 13,033. And should we go below that, uh, we could look at heading back down towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. And the 50-day moving average comes into play at 12,877. Now keep in mind, there's been a few occasions in the last few weeks and months with the 50 moving average acted both as support and resistance. So if the metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it'll be of importance in the future, although there are no guarantees. The US markets, uh, like, like, like I mentioned and in, at the top of the video, there's a lot of talk about a stimulus package. Whether it'll go through or not is a different story, but the fact that this has been spoken about has elevated uh, US index futures. We're calling the uh, S the, the the Dow Jones uh, north is going to open north of 30,200. So we're currently expecting it to open around 30,270. We're talking, we're, we're pretty much at or near all time high territory. Uh, so we're talking that the markets are, are clearly very bullish. If you press on higher from here, you know, traders will be looking out for 30,300, 400, and so on and so forth, because we are, let's face it, heading just, just about, you know, looking upon. Uh, uncharted territory. If we do have a bit of a pullback, you can have 30,000, big psychological number, that could act as support. A move below that could take us back down toward this area here at the lows of late November in around 29,461. And if we go below that, you know, we could look at heading back down towards, well, south of 29, the area of 29,000 down to around 28,868. So this is zone in here. Looking over uh, at the S&P 500, similar scenario. We're, we're kind of not we're not too far away um, from all-time high territory, which is achieved um, last Wednesday. If so, if you kind of we're currently in around 3,688. If you press on higher from here, we could look at retesting the the all-time high in that area in around 3,714 or 15 there thereabouts. And if you go beyond that. Traders are looking up towards 3,720, 30, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, any moves to the downside could, if you know, so if we do take out last Friday's low, we could take us back down towards this area here in around 3,600. And a move below that could take us down towards this area here in around, well, with the 50 moving averages, this blue line uh, in a 3,529, down towards where this line here is in a 3,511. Yeah, 3,511. 
So taking a look at now what's going on in the currencies, starting off on Euro Dollar. So Euro Dollar had a great run recently, uh, its highest level since 2018, had a bit of a pullback. We've had a very bullish move uh, on Thursday. So we are moving higher, a continuation of the kind of upward trend we've seen in the last few months. So if we press on higher from here, and if we take out the highs of early December, it could take us back up towards the 123 area, this zone here. Uh, which was last seen in April of 2018. Uh, moves to the downside, could find support in around here in at one spot 2058. A break below that could take us back, back down towards 120. It's kind of a big number for Euro dollar. And even if you go below that, we could then be heading down toward this zone here in at one spot 1923. Looking at pound dollar, so there's been broad dollar weakness across the board and and even though there's been a lot of uncertainty in relation to the uk future relationship with the european union sterling is broadly speaking held up fairly well obviously had a fairly negative day on friday just gone where it fell to its lowest level since mid-november but we moved uh we can have quickly rebounded today we're still in the upward trend of the last few weeks and months if you press on higher from here we could be looking up heading up towards one spot 35 one spot 35.15, um, which is, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking up, heading up towards one spot 36.08. Now these levels, we last saw one spot 35.15, um, well, just over a year ago, um, in mid-December uh, 2019, on the back of the uh, very sizable victory by the Conservative Party at the UK general election of last year. And if you go beyond those highs, we could take us back up towards this area here in at one spot 36.08. Uh, moves to the downside, keep an eye out for this blue line here, the 50 move the average in at one spot 3160. We can see how it acted nicely as support was well, just below it uh, in, uh, on Friday just gone. And on a few occasions in the last few weeks and months, it has acted as both a resistance and support. So keep an eye out for the 50 moving average. Coming on to the commodities now, taking a look at what's going on with the gold market. Gold has had not a pretty great run recently. Um, obviously, it hit an all-time high in August, had a quite a sizable sell-off, traded range-bound for a bit, had a leg lower. Um, it tried to kind of reclaim the highs of, of mid-September, which it couldn't get to, and really since early November onwards, it's been trading lower. Coinc you know, coincidentally, this is around the same time stock markets got a leg up because we've had the, everything from um, Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna, AstraZeneca, um, uh, AstraZeneca, Oxford University, all the various different news about the vaccine stories. So gold has, has been kind of, you know, has, has been suffering as, as a result. Traders have been looking for taking on more risk, and that's why we've seen stocks, broadly speaking, on a pretty good run the last few weeks. So while we hold below the 50-day moving average, this blue line here in at 1873, it's likely we could see the, the kind of the recent negative trend continue. And if we do press on lower from here, and if we, we could be looking at retesting the lows of late November in at one spot, sorry, uh, in at in 1764. A break below that could take us down towards 1740. And if we go below that again, we could look ahead back down towards 1700. Now, if we do manage to reclaim the 50-day moving average, we could then be looking at heading up towards the 1900 zone or just north of it, the 100-day moving average in at 1909. Uh, and we'd really need to be basically retaking the highs of early November in around 1965, this, this, high, this high here, if we want to kind of shake off the recent negative trend and you know, fall back into the wider bullish trend. Take a look now at what's going on with the oil market. Uh, I take a look at Brent crude oil, the cash market. So only, it was only on uh, Thursday just gone. We set a fresh nine month high for the for Brent crude oil, the cash market. We've been the last we had a bit of a pullback on Friday, but we're higher again today. We're north of fifty dollars a barrel, which is kind of quite uh, bullish in itself. If it continues to press or press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the highs of early March in around 54 spot 28. Any move to the downside could find support from this area here in around 48, and a move below that could take us back down towards um, the lows of early December in at 46 spot 81. And if you do have a move below that, 
we could then like heading back down toward this blue line here, the 50 moving average. We can see in a few occasions it acted, acted as resistance and support not too long ago. So keep an eye out for that. And the 50 day moving average comes into play in around $43.91. Now, as I mentioned, uh, I mentioned a couple of other um, charts in this video, which we wouldn't usually, usually uh, cover because this would be the only video for this week. I'll take a look at, at the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. And this is, this is an interesting one because the Australian dollar is often closely tied in what, what goes on in, com in commodities. Industrial metals and oils have been strong recently. It's considered to be a risk on currency and there's been broad dollar weakness. So with that, we've seen a decent move to the upside in, uh, in the Aussie dollar. In fact, we're back up at, we're actually basically at levels. Um, excuse me. We're basically at levels um, last seen since June 2018. So we're in a strong upper trend. If you can, and we're currently trading in around zero, it's about 75, 67. If you continue to move higher from here, we could be looking at tar targeting the highs of June 2018 in around zero, it's about 70, 76, 76. Uh, and if you go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up toward the kind of zero, it's about 78 area. Any moves to the downside could find support in, in around the kind of zero spot 74 and a move below that could take us back toward, toward this blue line here. Uh, well, also this yellow line as well, the 100 moving average and the 50 moving average seem to be converging on each other uh, in around zero spot 72.53, zero spot um, 72.31. And, you know, the last few weeks and months, we can see that, that those metrics and a few occasions have acted as you know, both support and resistance. And of course, you know, if you have a major move below that, we could head down toward this zone here in around zero spot 70, 31, down to zero spot 70. And lastly, and also not, um, tying in with the Australian dollar, I'll talk about copper. I mentioned at the top of the video about China's economy rebounding. They're very mi mineral hungry. Um, if needed for the kind of the, the rapid expansion of the economy. And, and as it was only on Friday just gone, we actually saw copper hit, I believe, a fresh seven-year high. Yes, it was basically its highest level seen since February uh, 2013. So the copper market is in a strong upward trend. Um, if we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the highs of January uh, 2013 in around uh, 377 cents a pound. Take a look at the price action recently. So the, the, the price action would suggest the last couple of days, it seems to me to ever so slightly either be potentially taking a breather or we could see a bit of a reversal just because we've had a very bullish candle on Thursday. We had an all time high on the Friday, but but the market managed to, you know, close below where it opened. Now it isn't an over, you know, it isn't, it, it's far from a bearish engulfing. But the fact that it hit an all time, it hit a multi year high and then closed well below where it opened and had a, has a relatively long wick. Um, the, the range of the day has been relatively long. It would suggest to me that there's a bit of a decision going on. That could mean we trade sideways, it could mean we trade in the upper trade at a more gradual pace, but today's range has been very small. So it's, it seems to me that there's a bit of indecision going on in copper. So if we pressed on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 377 cents a pound. A move lower could take us back down towards the kind of the 340 area here seen in late November. And even if you have a fairly similar sizable pull, um, pullback, we could head back down towards this area, that this blue line here at 320 cents a pound, the 50 moving average. We can see how it nicely acted as support in early November. Um, that's all from this, um, from this video. Thank you for listening and have a good trading week.